Hey folks, Steve here with a Fatal Alliances video. I realize it's been a very, very long time since I've done a video on Fatal Alliances, uh, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to talk about a subject that has come up recently on Board Game Geek. Uh, there were some posts by John Lindbeck. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that, John, if you're watching. Um, he, he had made some posts on a game that he's playing through. It looks like a vassal game, and... Uh, well, it, he he is, or someone, whoever's playing the Germans, are conducting a successful um, Imperial Sea Lion, which is an invasion of Britain uh, in World War One as Germany. At least that's what I call it, Imperial Sea Lion, right? That, that to differentiate it from the the theoretical World War Two Sea Lion effort that one might pursue. And I had always chalked it up to being impossible in Fatal Alliances because there's just not enough sea lift um, to get a lot of units over there and have it be successful. But apparently in his game he's managing to pull it off and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about um, how one goes about it. And what what's interesting, and I don't want to draw attention away from what John is posting, but, but I want to walk through on video kind of how I think it's operating right now and what are the constraints and how unlikely is it for it to work consistently and I, I'll maintain that I think it's very difficult so so let's talk about it um, and I haven't looked at Fatal Alliances in quite a while it's fun to look look at it again and makes me want to play it uh, again um, so let, let's take a look here and this is uh, a chronicle and pictures that John's been been posting, so obviously you can just go read this, but I'll, I'll look at it here. Um, so uh, this was posted. You can see uh, the Germans are doing quite well. They are actually two hexes adjacent to Paris, which might not be enough to actually take Paris itself. Um, well, maybe depending, but but that's very good. And they've pushed. They've captured. Um, Several of the port cities uh, in, on the English Channel side of the sea area there. Um, and they are just in general doing pretty well uh, in, in terms of what's out there and what's over there. Um, I mean, they're, I would say as the French, it's like that's a hard-pressed French. And his commentary here is, where is the BEF? A somewhat disastrous situation for the Entente on the Western Front. Uh, in December, so only a few turns into the game, um, the BEF was wiped out during the November-December turn. French morale is at 8, which is pretty low, all things considered. And that's before the morale phase for November and December. The Ottomans have closed the Suez. So, my general assessment at this point when he posted this picture was... Um, let me thumbs up that... Uh, uh, was okay. It, some something uh, the 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 allies have made some egregious errors somewhere along the line, right? Um, the, you know, sometimes you can't help the combat. I've seen the BEF wiped out in my plays. It just depends on where the BEF is at and where the Germ Germans are focusing. So BEF destroyed. Okay, that's rough. Um, the fact that the Ottomans have closed Suez is very remarkable to me, and I I would have like to know how that came about. It'd be interesting to know more about how that occurred. Um, now, I've done it. I've, I've had the Ottomans sort of be able to close Suez. Um, so I guess I know how it can be done, but it, it always seems like it's unlikely. Uh, and it just really, I, I guess, depends on what units the Commonwealth have set up where in the game, and whether or not they're shipping units to and fro, you know, to, to different areas. Um, so anyway, let's progress the story here a little bit. So then he posts this picture. March 1915, so it was a few months later. So effectively, you know, two turns later, or a couple turns afterwards, Germany invades the UK. And you can see he looks like he's got an amp up here, and he's landed uh, a marine, and it appears to be another unit. Now, um, the one thing I'm not sure about is why... He chose the hex here rather than Harwick, Harwich, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, because the port, I don't think, provides any defensive bonus in Fatal Alliances. I, mean, I might need to double check the terrain chart, but I'm reasonably confident that it doesn't help them. Um, 
Let me just, I'm going to double check the terrain chart real quick just to see. Uh, let's see. Minor port. Yeah, no, no, no difference. So, um, I, I not, again, not sure why he picked that hex over this hex. This hex arguably more important for supply purposes, but I don't know. Uh, but he managed to get on to the coast, evidently. Or, or it, it's saying the invasion's happening, so the combat is happening here at this stage. You can see London is seemingly empty. So where the Commonwealth has all of its units, I'm not sure. Um, presumably off-camera here, or they sent some down to Gibraltar or Egypt. I, I'm not sure where all the units are. Surely all the land units weren't uh, as part of the BEF over here, but... I, you know, the, the, I guess the Commonwealth only starts with so many units anyway. Um, the next picture shows a, sort of a, a bigger snapshot. So evidently, the Commonwealth units were off camera over here, and it looks like they're starting to pull some units around and, and into uh, a defensive posture around London. You can see um, uh they're, the navies are kind of out and about to some degree, um, and he has put the German uh, fleet out to sea, and they're dealing with the, the Commonwealth, and apparently the Commonwealth can't find anything. They're having a hard time finding the fleet, finding the ships that are doing their thing here, um, and the AMP and the transport that are here are, are allowing supply to be you know, sent over. And evidently, if I look, so this is this picture, you know, just to, you know, this is from March. So March, April, June, July. So, a, you know, the next turn later, um, German units in England in supply, offensive points allocated to Moltke, and they're going to do a big battle uh, attack on... Uh, Big attack on London, and I'm trying to figure out, like, so what did he get over here, right? So these units came in here. They would have moved in the turns between March and July, which is plenty of ac actions. Took the took the port, moved over here, surrounded London, which by some point would have been, you know, units were being added in here. And then um, they would have had to have... Uh, use the AMF and the transport to continuously bring over some of these other units here. Because it looks like, you know, if I'm reading this, it's like one unit and another unit, one unit and another unit, one unit and another unit. All things told, that's looking like six units. Even if some of these are divisions, I mean, they, you know, they've, they've had to take a couple of trips, I'm guessing, to get units over here. Um, and there's some discussion here about what What's there? Um, London Defense is an imp, a mill, and an engineer, and then also a land bomber. But again, it, it seems like you know what what the gamble here is: the the German fleet is not being found, that these transports are not being found, and basically, you know, and even if they were, they'd be screened by the rest of the German fleet to keep the supply lines open. And so these guys are getting supply. There is a bulky HQ here, which is then providing supply to these guys coming out of the Harwich, Harwick, however you want to say it, because uh, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, that port through the North Sea back to, you know, any of these other German ports uh, for supply. So they're maintaining the supply line here, and they've gotten a fair number, like a surprising number of units um, across. And they're sending them through, and then those units are able to move and and get situated for this attack. And then uh, this is the sort of post-combat situation, so London has fallen. Uh, and, and John goes to a little bit about talking about, you know, the supply or the morale situation for the Commonwealth is really bad. French morale is, morale is bad. Um, and you can see, you know, basically... Uh, the HQ flipped from the O-point expenditure unit advanced into London and flipped, uh, but has captured it. And now, you know, the basic thing is the Commonwealth are going to be suffering a lot of morale loss for losing their capital. They've also lost three factories, so their production has been 
greatly reduced. Because their morale is already plummeting, according to John, they're going to lose access to South Africa, who's going to declare independence, further reducing their production. Um, and they're going to be kind of trapped in that morale death spiral. And they're going to lose India, which will then further reduce their ability. And basically, by that point, the Commonwealth is going to have lost a lot of its production capability. They're not going to be able to restore supply very easily. And even if these units get their supply cut by the North Sea situation being disrupted, um, just being out of supply doesn't mean that they are going to go poof. The, the Commonwealth is going to have to come back and try to fight their way back to reclaim London. And in the process of doing that, their morale will likely have dropped so severely um, that you'll have units that won't attack, uh, that will fail to attack, or will surrender if attacked, and then very likely or very possible we would see them um, sign the, a, a peace treaty with the Germans and knock them out, out of the war. Um, at, at, what, at which point, you know, that's a huge boon <laughs> for the Germans and the Central Powers, and, and it sounds like France is all, also on the ropes in their game, and if France goes out, I mean, geez, I, I don't know if you call the game or what, the U.S. could come in, but if the U.K. or the Commonwealth and the French are both out, the, Germ the, the, the U.S. can't put units there. So they're not really going to have a good place to come onto the continent from. And the Germans are going to have really a lot of, uh, you know, basically a free hand to focus on the Russians and hurt them severely and probably win the game. I think it's very possible that that's going to happen. And still... It looks like, you know, here, <laughs> Egypt has fallen, so the Ottomans have cleared out uh, the, the Commonwealth here, and by taking Cairo and Egypt, that's going to be a further morale loss on the Commonwealth. So this game as is, is just doing awesome, <laughs> awesome for uh, the, the central powers. So let's rewind the clock a little bit and talk about how can you get there. What, how do you execute the strategy? What can you do to, uh, to actually succeed? Um, and, and to be honest, again, I think it's very difficult, um, very difficult. So let's, let's switch gears a little bit to, uh, Vassal and let's talk about, um, what, how you might set this up. So what John had did, uh, in his game was the Germans built their Marine unit on the first turn of the game. Uh, which means that, you know, effectively it, it takes three turns to build. So the earliest you could do an Imperial Sea Lion would be January, February. This is when you would execute it. You would get that Marine unit and then you would be off to the races. Now, um, one of the things with this is if you, like, if you're playing World in Flames a as the Commonwealth, you can kind of see if you look at the production chart and you're not doing like hidden production or something, some weird house rule like that. Um you're probably going to see Sea Lion coming. You know, if the Italians and the Germans are building a bunch of amps and marines and whatever else, like, okay, yeah, they, yeah they're probably thinking about Sea Lion. They might go ahead and do that. Um, for Fatal Alliances, you know, I think if, like, if the Commonwealth player sees the first German build is the marine unit, I, you know, I, it's probably, it's just one of those weird situations, like, who are you playing with? Are they going to guess that you're going for an Imperial Sea Lion, in which case, you know, they're going to defend against that. Or if they don't really notice, or they don't think, like, they just don't think it's possible, maybe you're going to use that Marine unit elsewhere um, against the, the Russians or something, maybe they let let that go and they don't cover it, right? So this is like an emergent strategy that maybe hasn't really been tried very much, um, but if it becomes tried out more, then it's going to start to become one of those things that a Commonwealth player is going to be watching out for. So, so let's figure this out. Um, now, I just set up my Vassal module, the 1940 start, and I moved some units around. You can ignore most of what's on the screen except for the units that I'm very specifically clicking and dragging. So let's just say uh, we're going to do this invasion. We're going we're gonna to come over to here. That's going to be our target. Well, um, and, and very specifically, we're going for London, right? It's going to be very difficult to conquer the Commonwealth and Fatal Alliances, but you can certainly try to nab the capital and hold it and let the morale be uh, the the killer stroke against the Commonwealth this way, right? It's certainly, that that's what you can operate on. And if you're lucky, you can look to expand 
the pocket out to Southampton, maybe Coventry, maybe Bristol, and then you're causing even more morale loss, and you'll more quickly knock the Commonwealth out of the war. So what? So what are we going to do, right? Well, you need to you need sea lift um, to get them to where they need to be. Uh, in the 1914 setup, the Germans get one transport and their AMP. So I have uh, an AMP here, an amphibious transport, and I have the transport here. The most um, efficient way to do this is to have the Marine be transported by a regular transport and then have uh, your other infantry unit, your other infantry corps, delivered by an AMF, and then you would, if you if you really wanted to add another combat factor, uh, you can uh, potentially put a division on uh, a, a surface combat vessel and transport that for another, another combat factor. Um, so altogether, you know, you're going to have, like, that's the maximum stacking you're going to have for a, an invasion that you're going to want to put out there. Now, you can beef this up, this invasion force up, with um, air support. And so, uh, this is going to depend on how well you're doing in Belgium. If you've taken uh, most of Belgium and you have access to these hexes, you could throw in a Zeppelin. You can also throw in this tactical bomber plane. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. If you're going for the Harwick, Harwich uh, port, this port here, that's in range that so you could potentially put in two combat factors. Um, I think, depending on what else you might have built or drawn, you could add more combat factors there, but. Uh, because this is going to be at the earliest 1915 Jan Feb 1915, there really shouldn't be any fighters. Uh, fighters come in in 1915, but they won't be built in January February. They won't be finished by then. So you could send these guys without really worrying about um, interception. So you could get a couple of combat factors there. Uh, you're also likely going to be trying to um, send some of your big ships to do shore bombardment. Now, assuming that the Commonwealth is already out in the sea zone and you're playing with uh, the presence of the enemy rule um, for naval movement, the optional rule, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting into these higher sea boxes with your big hitters. So it's very likely, you know, if you took these big, big shore bombardment ships, they could get into the two, the, the, the one box, potentially, um, because they're going to move one sea zone out. And then if they're in the presence of the enemy in Fatal Alliances, that's a minus two to their movement. So they'd be down to one. They could go into the one box. Now that confers a two penalty, this number here, from their shore bombardment factors on each ship. So for these three ships, you'd be adding three combat factors total to the combat. Um, now how you want to do supply, you got to keep the supply lines open. So there's a couple different ways to do it. John is relying solely on the AMP and the transports out there that are going to be screened. You could also put some convoy points out here, and I just threw a, one of the counters from here over to illustrate this. You'd probably put some ships there to screen. Uh, you might have some of the other ships out here just to kind of help fight in the in the sea, depending, it, and this depends on ultimately initiative who's going to get ships out here first uh, may may impact this so you could have some of these german ships in higher sea boxes but let's say you know a worst case scenario you're probably looking something more like this um or you know some some version of that right your ships are going to be somewhere out here um and then the the um then what we're looking at here is, you know, the actual invasion itself, right? So what what's going to end up happening is you're going to get these guys out here. At best, they'll be in the two box. Um, very likely, they're going to be in uh, a lower box, just depending on how this has worked out. And I think if I try to look back at... Uh, 
they, they see they had these guys showing in the three box. I don't know why. I think that's incorrect. Um, I don't see how they could be in that box. They they could at most be in the two box. So that might be an error on John's part. So if they're here. What else are we looking at here? Um, okay, so so we're gonna go for Harwick. Let's assume that it's empty, right? And that there aren't enemy forces there. So how many notional units are present in Harwick? Well, if we look at the notional unit combat factor chart in the rulebook, we get one. By default, it's not a city. A port is not a city, uh, so they don't get that one. They are defending in the home country of a major power, so that makes it two. I'll keep track up here. Uh, it is If it is not stacked with a land unit, but is in the Zoc of a friendly core-sized unit. So for that to be true, a unit's got to be here. Now, um, I could... Uh, I, I, hold on, let me switch my... There we go. Okay. So, sorry about that. I had a, my recording software on a different uh, window. So here, you know, if we're attacking here, that's two notional combat factors so far. One by default, one for defending in a home country. If there was a Commonwealth unit here, they would add another notional factor due to a Zoc, but they may not necessarily have one there. If the Commonwealth is sort of pushed everywhere else, they may only have units defending in London, if if that, right? So we could just grab any old unit here and just say, okay, this maybe they're in London, but if they're not here, then there isn't a Zoc. So this is part of that strategy. A Commonwealth player might put a unit here to project, project that Zoc into these hexes for that extra notional unit. Um, if any units are invading from a box lower than the three, well, again, I and this is one of those things, I don't, I think John screwed up here. These guys, at most, um, I guess this guy could be in the three box. This transport would have to be in the two box. I wonder if, um, oh, he must be using a better transport. So let's assume you pulled the good transport, and I guess that's going to be part of the strategy here is, um, let's see, I'm going to send that to the force pool, return to deck. Okay, so I guess if you're using the good transport, you pulled the right transport, you could get there all in the three box, so ne never mind. John, John is probably using those ships. So from the three box, so then you could avoid that extra notional unit. Uh, there'd be one if you were invading from a box lower than the three box. And if any non-marine core size units are invading from a transport, well, that's going to be true uh, here. Well, no, that's not the case. So we have we have this core going from an amphibious unit. We have this unit coming from a transport, but it is a marine. So we could get it that it's at two combat factors. Um, and then we get into a situation of what are our combat factors? Well, uh, the Mars is going to be full strength. Um, but when it comes to the invasions, we have to have the combat factors of all invading non-marine units. So that becomes a three. Three plus four is seven. Now half of one, um, I guess, rounds up to one. So we're talking eight. Eight there. Let's assume we get uh, these guys. So that's ten. And then our three for short bombardment is 13 combat factors to two. Now uh, there could be defensive shore bombardment. Um, but at most, uh, it's going to be at, let's see, only one SCS may be added to the combat for each cooperating friendly unit. There's two. I guess the notional unit is just one. Um, So let's say they could get two, just as an example, I'm not going to work out all the Commonwealth ships, 
but the way that the rules work out for defensive short bar, you could double it. So it'd be 13 to 4, I think, is what is likely. And if you're not spending O points on this, because you want to save them for the attack on London, that's a 3 to 1. I believe that's 3 to 1. 13 to 4. Yeah, 3 to 1 odds. So then you're going to roll combat. Um, I can't remember if there's a combat chart in here. Probably not. Um, let me see if I can find one on my own to look at. Um, okay. So this would be assault. Um, So 3 to 1 is going to give a plus 6 to the die roll. What's going to happen here? If you roll average, so on 2d10, I mean, you're basically looking at like 10 to 12. Um, oof. Yeah, it's, it's very dicey. You, you, you could end up with a very poor roll here. Um, and I don't know... I don't know. I mean, it, I guess it really depends on, like, if you are able to get out here first, you could get maybe these shore bombard bombarders here, and then you would get, instead of it being three, um, you would get six. So then you would be 16 to four. And that would be plus 8. That's certainly better. I think you'd have to do that. And then you could conceivably get it. And if you were really lucky, if you rolled well, you could get ashore with no losses. If you took one loss um, or a half loss, you could lose this division. Let's say he maybe gets lost. If he had to lose a whole one, I'd probably at this point lose the Marine. Because he's gotten you ashore, and now you've got the defensive factors here of six that are better. And then on future turns, you know, like these guys are going to be flipped. Um, then what you're going to have to wait for is the end of the turn. These guys go back home. They become flipped again. And then you're going to have to have units sort of ready to come out here again, maybe in this box even, depending on presence of the enemy. And you're going to drop off more units, so you would put, you know, uh, an HQ down, uh, and then you might bring in, you know, um, another unit as a division or something like that and and just again if you know if this guy can't attack you know the best he could do is stand here um, you still have pretty good odds to attack him and knock him out so I think it getting ashore was in my mind the hardest part maybe once you're ashore and the Commonwealth doesn't have a lot here it starts to open up there um, I'm just not sure how I would how else I would approach this um, certainly, you know, if, I guess if you did attack here, and then on that following impulse, you took control of the port, and end up here, and the Commonwealth unit is stuck in London, and you're sitting like that, then you could ship new units into the port and not have to worry about stacking. I guess that's the other way you could do it. Um, and eventually get, over the course of a couple of turns, you could be ferrying units over. But all of that is requiring that the Commonwealth rolls poorly to find you, that you can keep not only the transports and the amps out there providing supply, but you probably need to throw some convoy points up there as well uh, just to um, uh, provide uh, additional supply if, if one of these gets destroyed. Um, you have to be careful of any combat losses that happen here because they're going to be difficult to replace especially if you lose this port, um, which would, you know, basically cause another situation where 
you need to reinvade. Um, and whatever you're doing up here with your naval moves is taking away from what you're doing against France and what you're doing against Russia. So I think in, in John's game, you know, it's very circumstantial that he was able to pull it off. I would think it, this comes down to luck, right? Your big gamble is making this work. And I th the way I would think about it is it's not that different from a Sea Lion and World in Flames, uh, World, the World War II game, because you're basically, like, what are you putting at risk to what are you getting? Well, you're putting at risk, you know, your German fleet, and as you lose ships from your German fleet, that's morale loss. Um, you're, you're getting units here, which might get put out of supply, might get hammered, and then they get destroyed more easily being out of supply um, if they get flipped and whatnot. And you're going to lose morale for that. You're going to, basically, the opportunity cost of production, you know, what, what were those build points doing otherwise? And you're giving up your activities. So if you're taking a naval move or a combined move, that's less activity you have everywhere else to be making grounds. But the reward for doing this and doing this well is that you will have very, very potentially stretch the Commonwealth beyond their capability to deal with it. And as they start, you know, if you're able to get London, which is the, tr the true prize here, right? The second phase is bringing enough units uh, into this area where you can actually um, have a realistic chance of combat here, just throwing units here and say, you know, some big combined combat, you spend some O points, you do the whole thing to get in here. Uh, then you got to hold it, and that becomes a whole other challenge. But but the, the incentive is surely there, right? Like, even just taking London is a big enough deal to the Commonwealth, losing those three factories, losing the capital, um, and obviously destroying the units, defending the capital, and whatever else around here, um, is going to start to become a major uh, morale drag. Absolutely. And I think that, you know... It, even more so than in a, a sea lion in World War II and the World in Flames game, we're like, okay, well, if you take London, that doesn't do you any good. You really have to get up here to make the most of it, um, to really do all the things you need to do to, to knock the Commonwealth out of the war. Much harder here, even just taking these couple of things over here uh, in the southeastern part of the island, I mean, that that is devastating because of the morale impacts. Um you know, if I if I look at this, you're basically um, I have to double check one of my reference sheets. Um, let's see, you lose enemy control of home country, city, or resource. Yeah, you're you're gonna be getting pinged for the capital pretty hard, and if you manage to take uh, Southampton, then that's gonna be a big deal. If you can push to Coventry, that's gonna be even better. Um, and you know, truly, that that sustained morale loss um, is just gonna be too much. And if you're then lucky enough to get some U-boats out here, you know, if you're doing naval actions, why not move some subs? And you're able to at some point knock out some American trade. I mean, you're you're really putting the hurt on the Commonwealth past the point that they can deal with it. So I don't know. It's an interesting exercise to talk about. Knowing that John's pulling it off is really interesting. I think a lot of it just comes down to initiative and circumstance. Can you get the ships out here in the right sea box before the Commonwealth can first and and take action? Where did the Commonwealth put all of its ships? Um, where do they put all of their land units? You know, are they asking for it? Are they foolhardy and are leaving the home islands empty because they want to push really hard in the Middle East or whatever? I mean, I think you definitely need the Ottomans in the war to distract the British and force them to move stuff away from the home islands. Um, and that provides an opening, right? If you're pushing so hard that you're taking Egypt, you know, just taking Egypt's pretty great anyway, but... Um, forcing the Commonwealth to kind of try to put a foot in both, you know, sides of the pool 
is going to catch them in a situation where you might be able to do this more effectively. But the, the real challenge is keeping that supply open, getting the invasion off without being intercepted, and it is a huge gamble of build points, essentially, that will be hard to fit back in when you're trying to do everything else in the land war and addressing morale for yourself as Germany. There's a lot of peril in doing that, but obviously there is some dramatic uh, flourish, I guess, to a sea lion doing it effectively and causing the game to get knocked into a you know a favorable position for the central powers that way. I mean, it, there's always an incentive to try to do that. Um, but okay, well, I think that's all I wanted to do for this video. I just wanted to kind of talk through, like, how would you do it? What do you need to do? Um, and there are certainly certain advantages to trying it um, than others, but, you know, weather, I didn't even talk about weather. Weather is a factor here as well. You want good, you know, like, you want weather to be on your side, and if you're doing this in January, February, it's not likely to, to actually be good weather for you. Um, and if you wait till the spring and you've telegraphed this too much, Commonwealth might be able to respond effectively. There's just so many factors. Um, it's hard to judge whether or not it's a worthwhile venture for, for certain, but if you're looking at the board and you start to see a situation develop where you can do it, you can launch it, and if you built your, um, your marine unit, I mean, you can always use that to do some shenanigans against Russia, so it, it isn't a waste to build it, I guess, if you end up deciding, no, I'm not going to do an Imperial Sea Lion, I'm going to send it against Russia and help on that front, I mean, that, that's still valuable to have the Marine around, you know, for that purpose. So, um, I guess don't discount amphibious operations entirely, but just know that, you know, there are a lot of challenges to making it work well. And, you know, World War I is not known for its amphibious uh, operations, right? Um, the, the main one everyone knows about is Gallipoli, and that was kind of a failure, right? So, <laughs> to put it lightly. Um, all right, well, I will do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and Fun to see uh, Fatal Alliances on screen again and um, looking at this one. Uh, good game, fun game. We'll uh, see you next time, guys. Take care. Keep on gaming.